This is a box car that I've had in my collection for quite some time, and if you can take a look at it, you can see it's uh, pretty beat up, but it's nowhere close to unsalvageable. Today, we're gonna fix it up and get it running. This is my process for getting cars back up to snuff and back up and running. Now, first of all, you can see that this car has some issues mainly down here on the bottom. First of all, it's missing a couple wheels and it also has mismatched axles. So, and then also the coupler, while it does, it is a operating knuckle coupler, it is missing its little pin. So we're gonna go ahead and strip a bunch of this out and get it all fixed. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the trucks right here. And I'm actually, I've got this little old spool from some wire and I'm just going to take these out and they have these little plastic pins and I'm just going to grab a hold of that you can see and I'm just going to put it in the spool holder right there and so now I'm going to put the body of this away for right now let's focus on the trucks now a couple things that I'm going to do to this first of all we're going to be swapping from truck mounted couplers to body mounted couplers so one thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to remove these couplers right here so but first of all we're going to take off these axles and we're going to save them because it's always good to have spare parts in case you have other cars that have these axles but we're going to go ahead and put on different wheel sets on them so I'm just going to grab these four wheels. Now you'll notice I'm using metal axles and metal wheels. Now the reason for this is eventually I'm going to get full on uh, current sensing in all of my layouts. And what I want to do is I want to be able to make this easily have current sensing. So what we have here, and you can barely see it, is we have a little plastic block right there that prevents a short circuit with a metal axle and all we're going to have to do is jump that with the resistor and I've actually already done a video on that and I'll link that at the end but I want to be able to do this later on with this car. All right so we have our trucks in place and I really don't care about this coupler I'm not going to reuse it um, it can't go on any other truck so I'm just going to go ahead and nip them right off and this one actually the coupler completely broken off so I'm just going to go ahead and nip that one off. And now I'm going to trim it back just a little bit more. And we're going to trim this one off a little bit. Now I've got a file right here and I'm just going to file these out smooth. Just smooth them out just a little bit. All right, so now I can put the new wheels in. So now the trucks are ready, but we need to put on the couplers. Now, luckily for this car, it actually has two nice little holes right here and here. And that's gonna make my life a lot easier. I'm using Microtrain's medium shank pre-built couplers. You can also buy these as kits if you wanna build them from scratch. I have mixed results in my ability to put those together because of my big fingers. So I usually just spend the extra money and get the pre-built ones. So what we have here is we have medium shank couplers. There's also short shank ones and we can look and see, yeah, that's gonna fit pretty well. Now you can get a micro trains um, tap and drill set. So not only can you drill the hole the right size, um, but you can also tap it so that you have the threads in it. Now, I actually had one of those, except I kind of snapped the tap and I'm waiting on a new one to show up. But I do still have the proper size drill bit and I have it in my little pin vise right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and drill out the holes that are already right here that seem to be in just the absolute perfect place for this. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. All right, we got those in. Now, one thing that I like to do is with these couplers, the screws are just so tiny that I take them and I go ahead and preset them into the couplers. That's just gonna make life a lot easier. Now these are flathead screws and it's always good to have a set of precision screwdrivers on you for doing model work. I really love these. I just picked these up off Amazon. Um, nothing fancy here, but they work really, really well. I'll link them in the description below. So what I'll do typically is I will push the screw just a little bit over the edge 
just so that I can seat it right there. So makes it really easy to line up. Then we just twist it and install it in. You can see it goes in pretty easily. Sometimes you can actually tighten them down just a little bit too tight. When you get that, just loosen it just a hair. Now we just do the other side. Couplers installed. All we have to do is put the trucks back on. And voila, simple, quick, and easy. We've got this car back and ready to run, but we do need to check it and make sure that it's going to connect properly and that the coupler's at the proper height. All right, I've got my little programming track right here that I'm gonna use for this, and I have a little Microtrains coupler gauge. This just sits on the track right here. Don't do this with any power on because it will give you a short circuit and nothing will run. And we're just going to take this and we're gonna see how well it connects. And it looks like it is the absolute perfect height. Let's connect it up to a train on the layout and see how well it does. So there we have it, another one of my cars brought back into service. Now they do have different lengths of shanks on the couplers. They have short shank and medium shank. You'll just have to figure out which one you need. Based on the car, this is a longer box car. So the medium shank is gonna work a little bit better. But these are super simple ways to get older rolling stock that may have truck mounted couplers. A lot of in -scale, older in-scale rolling stock has those truck mounted couplers. And with a lot of body mounted couplers on the locomotives, that can cause derailments, which is one reason I like to switch to body mounted couplers. But you can see it's fairly easy to do and it also looks more realistic. So I'm really happy the way this turned out. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. Until next time, I'm Jimmy from the DIY and Digital. Stay safe, be kind, and happy railroading.